Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the 2009 British Math Olympiad. So this is from round two and it is question three and it involves a functional equation. So our goal is to find all functions f from r to r such that for all x and y in r, the real numbers, we have f of x cubed plus f of y cubed equals x plus y times the quantity f of x squared plus f of y squared minus f of x y. So before we look at a solution, I've got a couple of hints built for you guys to try. So the first one is to plug in special values for x and y. And this is a typical hint for any of these functional equation type problems. So we want to try like x equals y equals 0, maybe x equals y equals 1, things like that and then you could try like x equals x and y equals zero. So what I mean by x equals x is like x is free to be anything we want, or x equals x, y equals plus minus one, or x equals x, y equals negative x, you know, stuff like that. Then furthermore, since we know that we're dealing with a function of real numbers, think about how you can use that to maybe simplify this a little bit. You know something is true about the real numbers that would not be true about the rational numbers or the integers or something. Now next is the solution is probably very simple. And this is true for most functional equation type problems. Usually the solution is like a linear function or a constant function or maybe even the zero function. And that'll be the case here. It'll be a pretty simple function. Okay, so now maybe give this problem a go with these hints and we'll come back with the solution. Hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a solution, starting with that first hint, where I said to set x and y equal to some nice values in order to turn this equation into something that's a little bit more useful. So the first thing that we'll do is set x equal to zero equal to y. So in other words, x and y are both equal to zero. So notice that makes the left-hand side of this equal to two f of zero. So that's pretty clear because zero cubed is equal to zero but then it sets the right-hand side of this equal to zero plus zero times a bunch of stuff. Doesn't matter what this stuff is because zero plus zero is zero. So in other words, we have two f of zero equals zero. And that brings us to our first useful fact, and that is that f of zero is equal to zero. So in other words, we know that this function has the origin on it. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is leave x as something that is free and set y equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll set x equal to x, so that's how I'll denote that. And then I'll set y equal to zero. So let's see what we get in that case. So here we're going to have f of x cubed plus f of zero equals x times f of x squared plus f of zero minus f of zero. Now this may not be super useful, except we have this green fact up here that f of zero equals zero, which means we can cancel this out, this is zero, and then both of these are zero, even though they're like subtracting each other anyway. And that gives us like our second useful equation here which is f of x cubed equals x times f of x squared. And notice that this is true for all x, which are real numbers. Great. But now we can go back to our original equation and rewrite the x cubed and the y cubed using this in terms of x squared and the function. So let's go ahead and do that. So maybe original functional equation now looks like this. So we have x times f of x squared plus y times f of y squared equals x plus y times the quantity f of x squared plus f of y squared minus f of xy. Good. But actually that's gonna be pretty helpful because notice if we were to distribute this x plus y onto this uh, trinomial, or I should say three termed object, we'll get an x times an f of x squared and a y times an f of y squared, which will cancel out what's happening on this left hand side. So let's go ahead and take this. We'll distribute it to all of these terms. We'll take this y, also distribute it to all of these terms. 
and that's gonna give us something on the right hand side that looks like this. So I'll go ahead and copy the left hand side down. So we've got x, f of x squared plus y, f of y squared. And now our right hand side looks like x, f of x squared plus x, f of y squared minus x, f of x, y. So that's what we get from that peach colored um, distribution. And now from the yellow distribution, we'll get plus y, f of y squared, plus y, f of x squared, minus y, f of x, y. Great. Now we can notice that this x, f of x squared will cancel with this x, f of x squared. And this x, f, sorry, this y, f of y squared will cancel with this y, f of y squared, giving us a zero on the left-hand side of the equation, and then these one, two, three, four terms on the right-hand side of the equation. So I'll go ahead and clean this up, and then I'll take this equation, which is given kind of in blue, and have that be my next fact, which we have calculated. So far, we've determined that our function, which satisfies this functional equation, must satisfy these two equations as well. So f of zero equals zero, and then we've got this thing that involves just squares of x and y, and f evaluated at x, y. So the next thing that we wanna do is show something about f of x versus f of negative x. So I'll do that kind of by introducing another dummy variable. So I wanna set x equal to the cube root of z and y equal to the negative of the cube root of z. So I wanna point out here that since x is any real number, any real number can be expressed as the cube root of another real number, kind of given the fact that cube roots always exist. You might say, well, why am I doing a cube root here? Well, I'm doing a cube root here because that will simplify this left-hand side of the equation. Notice I'll have f of z and then plus f of negative z. And then why am I doing kind of equal and opposites here? Well, I'm doing that because now the x plus y will cancel. Okay, so let's go ahead and notice that if we plug this into our original functional equation, we'll get f of z plus f of minus z equals zero. Great. But now what that tells us is that f of minus z equals negative f of z. And notice that this is gonna be true for all z, which are real numbers, because of that ability to express x and y as cube roots or negative cube roots. And that's really why we need a function of real numbers and not like a function of rational numbers in this case. Okay, so I'm gonna maybe go ahead and add this to my list of facts. So I've got f of negative x equals negative f of x, and that's gonna be true for all x. So I'm renaming my z as x just so it looks a little bit more like my first two equations. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Now we've got everything that we need in order to finish it off. Okay, now that we've built some accessory facts, these three accessory facts, which quickly follow from our functional equation, we're actually ready to finish it off. And so I'm gonna finish it off by building a system of equations by taking x to be something that is free and then y to be something that is nice for everything to work out. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll set x equal to x and y equal to one. Now let's notice that this plugged into our second equation will give us x times f of one plus f of x squared, and that's the problematic term, but you will see that that will cancel eventually, will be equal to x plus one times f of x. Great, now we've got a function that only involves f of x squared, f of x, and f of one, but that's just a number that we can deal with later. Now we want to find some other values of x and y that will produce another equation involving f of x squared and f of x, and then maybe we can like cancel out the f of x squared. So if you think about it for a little bit, you really have two major choices. You could let x be negative x and y be one, or you could let x be x and y be negative one. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we'll set x equal to x and y equal to negative one. 
Great. And so let's see what that gives us plugged into the second equation. So here we will have x times f of 1. We're using the fact that negative 1 squared is 1. And now we'll have minus f of x squared. Great. So that kind of cancels out super nicely. So this is going to be equal to x minus 1 times f of negative x. Great. But now we want to use the fact that f of negative x equals negative f of x. So that allows us to change this minus to a plus if we change this x minus 1 to a 1 minus x or a negative x plus 1. And now we're all set. We can take our two equations and then add them. Let's see what we get when we add them. So here we'll have 2x times f evaluated at 1, and then the f of x squareds will cancel. And then next, the x times f of x will cancel, which is also lucky. And we'll have f of x plus f of x, so that's going to be 2f of x. So in other words, we have f of x equals f of 1 times x. And now if we set f of 1 equal to maybe a, we can see that that means that f of x must be a linear function. So it is a times x. Now we just have to determine what that a is. So next we'll plug this value for f of x, so we know it's got to be a linear function, into our original equation over here and show that in fact all linear functions work. In other words, a can be really anything we want. So let's go ahead and plug that into the left hand side over here. So we have f of x cubed plus f of y cubed. So that's going to be equal to a x cubed plus a y cubed. But notice that's equal to a times the quantity x cubed plus y cubed. But now x cubed plus y cubed has a nice factorization. And that factorization goes like this. We have x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. Great. But now notice that this x plus y is built into the right hand side of this functional equation. So let's notice we can take this x plus y and then we'll take this a and distribute it onto the other part and reorder as we go. So this is ax squared plus ay squared minus axy. Good. But now what I want to notice is that this equals the right hand side of this functional equation. So in other words, for any real number a, the function f of x equals ax satisfies the defining functional equation. So that means that f of x can be any linear function. And that's a good place to stop.